Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. The So Stealth UAV warplane finishes first phase of testing. Harrison Ford may be grounded while on the job. And the cost of air shows is causing some cancellations. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. With the completion of its 100th flight last month, the Neuron Unmanned Combat Aerial Vehicle Technology Demonstrator has completed its test campaign in France. Throughout this entire campaign, the Neuron and associated equipment demonstrated exemplary availability and reliability. In this first testing phase, the purpose was to open the flight envelope, including with weapon bay doors open, to test the electro-optical sensor and to evaluate data link performance. In the second phase, most flights were dedicated to infrared and electromagnetic signature detection confrontations against operational systems. Those confrontations, which produced all the expected results, were performed under the authority of the French Defense Procurement Agency. A new chapter now opens for the neuron with evaluations that will take place in Italy and then in Sweden. Harrison Ford's accident last week, in which his Ryan PT-22 experienced engine trouble and went down on a golf course near Santa Monica, California, may cause insurance companies to take a hard look at his flying, at least while he's actively working on a movie. Ford sustained moderate injuries in the accident. But the larger issue is how movies that are in production are insured. A report appearing in the Los Angeles Times indicates that such insurers take a dim view of actors participating in activities that they deem to be risky while they are working on a movie. And flying is not the only thing that insurers preclude. The list includes skydiving, scuba diving, driving race cars, and mountain climbing, among other things such as the price one must pay for being a rich and famous Hollywood celebrity. We at ANN wish Mr. Ford all the best, and we're pretty sure we'll see him airborne again in the near future. After the break, are air shows just getting too expensive? Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument. TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, send an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Airshow organizers at Waterloo in the Canadian province of Ontario have pulled the plug on the annual event indefinitely. And the same fate is possible in Paulding County, Georgia, where the county commission may withdraw its support. The announcement about the Waterloo show was posted on the event's website. Event organizers said in a statement posted on the event's Facebook page that there simply was not enough support to make the event self-sustaining. It's reported that the show has been in financial trouble since 2012 when it was nearly canceled. It received a grant from Celebrate Ontario in 2013 of $74,300 and again was supported by provincial funding in 2014 in the amount of $65,450. Comments left on the CTV website associated with a story on the cancellation 
noted that there was a $20 admission price for the show, which was called Beyond Most Ordinary Families in the Region. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, it can be fun to look back and enjoy the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. I think the flight instructor community is going to be a key to solving some of these flight training issues that, you know, AOPA and others have identified. And I think we want to focus on those parts of the flight instruction equation where we can leverage and do the most good. The Society of Aviation and Flight Educators is all about aviation training. In this video, Jim talks with SACE Robert Wright about instituting pilot training reform. Search SACE Robert Wright on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Ansari wins NSS Space Pioneer Award. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we've summarized some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The National Space Society announced that our good friend Anusha Ansari is the winner of its 2015 Space Pioneer Award for service to the space community. She is the first female private space explorer providing an inspirational story that's made her mark in history. Rockwell Collins has unveiled its A-Rank Multi-Link Flight Tracking Service, offering a comprehensive and cost-effective global flight tracking solution for the world's airlines. Numerous technologies are used to track the airplane anywhere in the world all the time. Bell helicopter sales continue to spike. Bell and SECO International have entered into a letter of intent to order 10 Bell 505 Jet Ranger X helicopters. The announcement was made at Bell Helicopters vendor booth during Heli Expo 2015. Air Force retired Colonel Dean Hess has passed away at his home near Dayton, Ohio at the age of 97. While in the Army Air Corps and later the U.S. Air Force, he flew more than 300 combat missions during World War II and Korea. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. We're sorry to say that a tragic mid-air collision between two helicopters in Argentina resulted in the fatal injury of all 10 people aboard both aircraft. The aircraft were involved in the filming of the reality show Drop which is a European survivalist program. The helicopters were recorded on video when the collision occurred. Eight of those fatally injured were French citizens, including two that had won Olympic medals for France. The aircraft collided at about 5.15 p.m. local time in the town of Villa Castelli in La Rioja province, about 730 miles northwest of Buenos Aires according to the La Rioja Secretary of Security. The area is on the edge of the Andes Mountains and is sparsely populated. Well, that's our program for Wednesday, March the 11th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations 
every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.